Hello, welcome to our 2022 Tracer 24 DBS. We're gonna start at the back bumper here. You just reach in, pull in the cap. Inside of that back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Just take note of those two ears in the adapter here. That's all be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. We're just keeping it stored in the bumper here. Just helps keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that little bit cleaner. And that cap just presses back into place. Taking a step down, we're gonna find this little port right here. So as you pop that open in the bottom corner, you can see there's a little notch there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. You can press that in, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place, and then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down as well. Following the cord back, you find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you got the power to do so. Purpose of charging your batteries or running your fridge. Up back here, we're gonna find your sewer system. So that cap there, you're just gonna kind of press it in, give it a little turn, pops out of there. You can see it's got the exact same ears that your sewer hose had. So you just be attaching that the same way. Just press it on, give it that little turn, clicks in, and there you have it. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. So black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. Gray tank is filled from your kitchen sink as well as your bathroom sink and your shower. So typically cleaner water there. So when you're dumping your tanks, you're gonna to wanna to start with that black tank. Let that, self drain, let that drain itself out all the way. Once that's done, we'll come to the gray, dump that last just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. And down towards the front, we're gonna find our water system down here. So these two in the back here are your low point drains. So you just got those valves, you can open those up and drain out the fresh water system. Purpose of that would be if you're leaving the trailer for a cup for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can just drain it all out. Or for winterization, just to get all the water out before you go pumping the, winter, the antifreeze through. In the front here, you're gonna find your fresh water drain. So as you open that up, it'll just drain out your fresh water tank. Uh, on the other side, we're gonna find your fresh, sorry, right away, we're gonna find your fresh water tank fill. And I'll just point out this guy real quick. That's a little vent for your fresh tank. So once you start seeing the water spitting out of there, that's your fresh water tank full. This compartment here, as we open that up, it's just got the little magnet latch, holds it open. And then we get all of your water system over here. So up top, you get the little light so you can see what you're doing. Off to the left side here, you have a solar panel charger. So you're just gonna open up that panel, solar panel plug into there, charges your batteries. On the right side, we've got your satellite inlet up top. So coax cable will just plug into there, fire up at your TV location. Same idea down below for cable. Right here, we've got your city water connection. So you're just gonna pop that cap off of there, take a water hose, plug it into there, turn it on, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. To the left side here is your fresh water tank fill. So you're just gonna pop that cap out. Then you're gonna take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. And like you said, like I said, you know that uh, tank is full once you start getting that water out of that vent there. In the bottom left corner, we've got your battery disconnect. So you can see it's currently off, just pulls right on out of there. You get that little kind of notch down in the bottom. You're gonna line that up, give it a turn, and that's your battery now turned on. You get your outside shower here. So you got this little, in the hose right there, it's got two little ears there. Those are just gonna line up into those little notches there. Press it in, give it a little eighth turn that locks it into place. You get your hot and cold water as well as the shower head here. In the bottom right corner, we've got your black tank flush. So you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know for a fact that it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically that's some debris inside of that tank just hanging between the probes causing a misread. So what you can do is just pop that cap out of there. Take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water and that'll flush out that tank, getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. Now, of course, you would be having a bunch of water lines coming up through here, so you can just pull this little plug out of there and you can access from underneath so you can keep this compartment closed. This customer's also opted to go with the weight distribution hitch, so we just got that stored in here as well. This, whole, this entire storage compartment is accessible from inside the unit from your underneath your bed and it is accessible straight from the other side as well. Around front of the unit, so that little black box up on the frame with the red light there, that's just your TPMS sensor. That's what would be sending to your vehicle. I'll show you the other hand, or the other half of that unit right away. This black box here is housing your battery. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or that solar panel that we've shown you, or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. These two knobs here, if we just loosen those off and push them back, you get access to your propane tanks. For the video, pull them right off. And you can see we have your change over up front here. So our arrow is currently pointed over here. And it is green right now, so it's letting us know that there's propane in the system. If it were to go red, it's just letting you know there's no longer any propane there. At that point, you're most likely just gone empty. At that point, you just flip the arrow over and run off of this tank while you get the other one filled. Up front is the power tongue jack, so you get your light switch on the left there. Up is down, and down is up. Around the other side, we have the other end of your storage compartments here. So inside here, we're going to find our water hose, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. It's your 30 amp cord into here, 15 amp to a standard outlet. 
This little jack right here is the manual override for your slides. And then this little jack right here back here would be the manual override for your stabilizers. This box here just contains a bunch of accessories and little things that I guess were included in this customer's deal. And then up top here, you've got a little dual function light. Once we get inside, I'll be able to show you the switch a little bit better, but up top there's a switch that is labeled with a one and a two. The two is a dual function, so that's where it'll run off of motion sensing and one is just gonna be on. The motion sensing will of course turn itself off automatically and as soon as it picks up motion, it just turns itself back on. Up on the wall back here, you've got your uh, stabilizer jack switch. So press and hold extend, you'll find the stabilizers come down. Now these are not levelers, they're just stabilizers. You can see if I put my foot underneath it, the other side still goes. So it'll equalize itself out on your campsite. So you want, it, you want your trailer about as level as possible before you bring them down. When you are bringing them down, you're gonna bring them down until they contact the ground and then we'll hear a little bit of a load on the motor. And once you hear them kind of winding up a little bit, that's when you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you're to continue extending it, you can actually, you're not meant to be lifting the trailer with these. So if you're to continue extending, you can actually bend them. Just right here's a little leash latch. So if you've got the dog out, you can tie him down. Little bottle opener there. You also have a GFI protected outlet outside, as well as a cable and satellite outlet. So if you're looking to have TV outside, you get the power to do so. Straight up from there, you're going to find your two exterior speakers. Those do light up. I'll show you that once we get inside. And then right here, you've just got the exhaust for your furnace. So of course, if you're ever running a furnace, you just want to make sure that's not blocked off. It does get hot. In the back, we've got your exterior kitchen here. This compartment just opens on up. Again, the magnetic latches hold it open. Got your 120 volt fridge on the side here. So as long as you're plugged in, this guy's going. Temp control's just right up there. And then for the little compartments over here, you just have a little light front and center, just on its own center push button. And then this compartment here slides on out. So you get your travel latch, open that up, slide it on out. Then you get the latches in each corner, just to hold it open for you. And then in your sink, you'll find a propane hose here. So you just got that black collar, you just gonna pull that back, undoes the quick connect and you can disconnect it. Underneath your stove, you'll find this little hose here. So same thing, you're just gonna pull that collar back, press it into place, clicks in, make sure that's locked in. There we go. And then back here, you're gonna find the exact same quick connect. It's just not black, it's brass with the addition of this valve here. So with that valve closed off, you can operate that quick connect as you want. With that valve opened up, you cannot, all right? So it's just kind of an added safety. You have to have that turned off. Then you can attach your hose, lock it in, open up the flow. Then we'll come up. Open this guy up. You get your two little wings here. I'm just gonna bring those down, keep any sort of wind out of there. Press in, turn it over to light, hit it with a sparker, and you can see she fires right up. Now the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the trailer for a while, it can take a minute just for these guys to fire up, just because it's gotta clear all the air out of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. Once we're done, we're just gonna kind of lift up on those wings a bit, pull them back in, it falls back down into place. Over on the side here, you've got the same sort of quick connect for your sink over here. So you have, the, again, the two ears, you just can press them in, turns and locks in place. You get your hot and cold water. The sink itself doesn't have a drain, you'll just be pulling it out and dumping it out as you wish. The head here is mobile as well, so you can kind of point that wherever you like it. And we'll pull the hose out of here now. So again, closing off that flow, pulling that guy out of there, put that dust cap back in. Pull that hose out of there, and then I just like to connect it to itself, just ensures that absolutely nothing's getting in there. And we'll just store it back in that sink. Undo our latches, and slide it back home. Back it back down, and there you have it. All right, so around the back of the unit, Right in the center here, you've got your hot water tank. So you just get that one little keyway there. You're just gonna line that up and it pops on open. All of your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before you ever turn it on though, you just wanna hit this relief valve right there and make sure a shot of water comes out. We've got no water coming out of it right now just because we've currently got the unit winterized. If it were full though, you would get that water out of there just letting you know it is safe to fire it up. If you're not getting water out, you just wanna make sure your water system's turned on. Make sure this guy's full, just so that you're not burning anything out. Lock it back down and there you have it. So there's another switch down in the back bumper here. So this is for your rear stabilizer. It works the exact same as the front to get your extend and retract. Back here, you'll also find your spare tire. And straight up from there, we've got a pre-wired mount for an observation camera. So we'll just make our way inside. Okay, here's this handle here, just up 90 degrees, falls into place. Then we can open up our door. The door is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Yellow handle, either way, we'll undo the latches. And then the stairs will fall out. You have these two little quick pins on either side, so you can pull those out and extend or retract your legs as needed, just to make sure that they're level in your campground. 
Then we'll make our way inside and straight in on your left, you're gonna find your fire extinguisher. So that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Up from there, you've got your light switches. So on the left here, it does all of your interior lights. Center left here, it does your awning light. Center right does a an accent light up front. We can show you that in a sec if you like. And then this one on the right here does your, which one did it do now? Speaker, Speaker lights, yeah. Right. So like I said, the center right does your accent light up front. So we'll just show you those real quick. Just kind of a scare light up front. And there you have it. Okay. So down from there, we're gonna find our slide out switch in the bottom right here. Just press and hold out and the slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, you're just gonna hear some whines from the motors and then they'll turn themselves off. It is pretty well, completely automatic. So there's our winds and that's that. On the left side, you've got your awnings. Press and hold out and the awning will make its way out. And once that awning's fully extended, we'll see a little black flap come down at the end and then we'll also see the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna wanna stop. If you were to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will be underneath our tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap coming down and there's our tube so we'll stop right there now if it were to start raining it is going to be holding some water anyway so what you can do is grab either arm front or rear and you're just going to pull down on it and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head allowing water to then run off i feel like that angle better because it does give you more shade you can do the same thing with the arm up front before you bring it back in though you just want to make sure these are, guys are back out straight and fully extended just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything We'll press and hold in, and that awning will make its way back in. Again, just for making sure that our fabric is over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does keep catch the wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're gonna wanna bring it back in. Again, just so that you're not running the risk of bending your arms. So right above our head here, we've got one of these motion sensing lights. So you can see you got the one, so that's gonna be just turned on. And then two on the side there is gonna be your dual function with the motion sensing. So we'll turn that on in two. It'll be on for a little bit and hopefully it realizes that we leave in a bit and it'll turn itself off. Into the bedroom, your light switch is just up on the wall there. And then in the bedroom, you've just got your storage across the top here. Little closet space on the side here as well. With a little cubby space down the middle. And like I said, if you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment there. Your two pocket doors here are just held in with little latches in the center here so you just be popping that up and you can slide the doors as you wish tv mount over here so just a v bracket would slide into there and there you have it straight up from there you've got your power outlet as well as your cable and satellite outlet for it also above my head here you can see we are pre-wired for uh wi-fi above the head of the bed each person has a reading light here so just on their own center push buttons there and then to the other side You just get the little power outlet down here and the same sort of closet space up there. The blinds throughout the unit pretty well just sit where you leave them. This emergency exit here, just pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen, taking this handle here, throwing it outside and hopping on out. Above our heads, we've got our smoke detector. There we go. Then here near our entertainment area, we've got your thermostat over here. So the power button there turns it on. Press and hold. All right. So you can see we're in fan right now. So fan is just gonna be moving air. There's no cooling involved. You can see we're currently L for low. If you hit this fan button here, we'll go into high and then bring in the high fan. If we hit mode after that, it'll come down into dry. So at this point, it's gonna run the low fan and the compressor and just try to dry out the air, get rid of any sort of humidity. Hit mode again after that, comes up into cool. So at this point, we can select our fan speed. So we're currently in low. We could also go to high. So it'll only use the low or only use the high. Or you can go into auto and at that point it'll start using like if it's too far from its goal temperature it'll use the high fan to get there quicker and then once it's close it'll use the low fan just to keep things a bit quieter for you so with that air conditioner going 
you basically have two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move our air, or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then close it off to start moving the air throughout. Temp selection is gonna be done just with your arrows here. Then after cool, if we hit mode again, it'll come down into heat and you're just gonna get that FO. It's just letting you know it's turning the furnace on. Once that furnace turns on, it'll be moving its air through kind of all these little portals we have up on the side. We also had them in the bedroom there. After heat, you hit mode again, it'll come back down to just fan and it'll just cycle back around. Right. Once we're done, press and hold, it'll turn itself off. And there you have it. So back here, you've also got a power outlet, your cable and satellite outlet up top here, and then right down in the bottom, it's your antenna outlet. Right beside it, you've also got that little black button there, it turns on that green light, just letting you know that your antenna is turned on. It gives you your TV signal and also help clear up your stereo signal as well. So TV, of course, is on a mount. So you just have the travel latches here, you're just gonna undo those. And then it just pulls out, goes wherever you like it. Once we're done, just gonna push it back, make sure it's flat up against the wall. Put our travel latches back in, and simple as that. So down below that, we've got your stereo, your sound bar, so the center power button there turns it on. There we go. So radio, of course you get your stereo. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. You get your volume and commute on the side there. Hit mode and you can cycle through all of that. So auxiliary would be in the front here. After auxiliary is TV, which should be hooked up. Mode again, you get into DVD, which would be through the back of the unit. And then Bluetooth connect to your phone, USB charging, and then once HDMI is hooked up, that'll be coming an option as well. You get your seeks as well as your pause and play. And then your select here just to get through all of your settings. Power button, turn it back off. It's simple as that. Down below that, we got a little bit of storage here. And then just off to the left side, we got that little black box there. That's your LT detector. Propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like your smoke detector would. Then in near dinette, this little light here has its own push button up on the side. Pretty straightforward. Same blind that you had up front, just sits where you leave them. For your table, you're just gonna kind of wiggle it up and then these legs will fall out. You can push them out underneath and then you have a little pedestal across the side. You'd be setting the table down onto that. Taking this back cushion as well as this filler cushion here to cover up the table and create another bedding area. In your kitchen, you get the storage up top here. Also, there's that little black barcode right there. So if you were to just kind of get, go into the uh, Lippert app and scan that, put in your password, put in your device name, all of those controls that you have on that panel over there, you can actually have control with your phone. Mobile head, hot and cold water, of course, and the folding cover. A little bit of storage down below that, just being mindful of our drains and our water lines. Of course, don't want to be breaking those. You have the drawer space here, and in here is where you're going to find the other half of that tire pressure monitor system. It's that little uh, readout gauge that would just go in your tow vehicle, and you just have the signal sent to it from the unit, letting you know what your tire pressures are at drawer space here and then we get your microwave here it's pretty standard just like home not much i can teach you there down below that we get your range vent you get your fan on the left and the light on the right so of course propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it you want to make sure that fan is turned on evacuating said fumes whenever you're using it the bifold cover is just going to flip on back it sits where it back there then you can take your knob, turn it over to that little flame, hit it with a sparker, and she fires right up. Like I said outside, the first time you go to use the propane system, it can take a minute for everything to fire up, just because it's got to clear the air out of the lines. It's perfectly normal. This switch on the right side there, if you go to one, it lights up all of your knobs. If you go to two, it lights up your stove as well. For the stove, I'm just going to open it up. This right knob there, you're going to turn it over to the little flame. Hit it with a sparker and you can see that little pilot light gets going in the back there. Once it gets going, you just want to hold the knob in for another couple of seconds and you can release the knob and the pilot light will hold itself. Turn it up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once we're done, turn it back down to pilot and it'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the trailer for a while, you just want to make sure that's right off. Down below your stove is your converter. Just press it top and center, pops on open. You get all of your breakers down the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's going to sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. Then on the right side, we've got all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. 
full of old fridge here. So you just have your little travel latch there. You're just gonna move that over. Then we get your freezer up top. Temp selection in the back there. And down below that, we've got your fridge. Temp selection across the top. Below your fridge is just the return air for your furnace. So you just wanna make sure that's not blocked off. It does kind of get warm. Then your bunk area, you get two little lights up on the top. You also get a little window back there as well. Power outlet and identical down below just with a USB outlet rather than a power outlet. A little doghouse down below that as well. And then we gotta get your pantry, your closet space here, whatever you want it to use it for. And then above my head is just a little roof vent. You're just gonna turn that knob to open it up. Super simple. And then into the bathroom, you get your same dual function lights in here. So these are motion sensing as well. Right. Then your medicine cabinet, it's just that little bit of storage there. Down below that, we've got your monitor panel. So in the bottom corner, we've got your water pump switch. Turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. And then your battery, so your monitor system, so battery here. You can see we're currently C for charging. T would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, it'll go to third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Then over here, we've got your hot water tank control. So on the left there, that's a little thunderbolt in the, down in the bottom, just signifies that you're turning it on with electricity. And on the right side, you get the little flame, just says that we're turning it on with propane. So turn that switch on and that hot water tank will automatically fire up. If you were to get this little check light in the middle here, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, just off and back on to reset it. Hot and cold water at your sink, of course. A little bit of storage down below. Again, just being mindful of our drains. And on the side, we've got your GFI protected outlet. So test and this on the left side, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, this is the first thing you should check. Your toilet here just has this little flusher front and center. And then in your shower, just open that up real quick here. So you just have a tra travel latch there, it slides on open. You can see you get the nice head, hot and cold water, of course. And then the little roof vent up above it, from skylight, sorry. The roof vent is above my head. It's got the same knob, you're just gonna turn that to open it up. And then in the back corner, you get the switch, it turns on the fan. I believe that is about it for this little guy. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-227-7272.